Let's try this again. <laughs> Silly Twitch. What you doing to me, Twitch? I'm trying to trying to do a broadcast here. <laughs> All right, I think I'm back. We'll see if it uh, if it agrees with me here in a moment. If it uh, if it agrees. With oh, me here hey in a there. If it, right. uh, if it doubled up. Oh, me hey there. If it, right. uh, if it doubled up. up. <laughs> That's gonna sound weird. All right, got me off of that screen. Do to do to do. Let's uh, let's move, move some windows around. Uh, window moving. Uh oh, Cotillion's back. <laughs> Who broke the banging noise? The Vormithrax rap. Or is that dub? Is that dubstep? Maybe I maybe that was the Vormithrax dubstep. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk. It's time for a brand new challenge. We are going to play, uh, you know, we're gonna play some Cataclysm. We're mixing things up. I'm moving back to a uh, a more new player friendly world setting, but you know, with the traditional Vormithrax hardness <laughs> added in, but uh, not double zombies or anything. Completely default game world. So that side of it will be a little easier. Hopefully, we can keep things proceeding a little faster. Uh, we're doing Noah's Bizarre Battle Arc. That's what I'm calling this one. I'm playing a slightly skewed combat mechanic whose religious zeal has driven him to create an arc for bizarre creatures of the Cataclysm. He must build an arc capable of transporting and protecting two each of six different bizarre Cataclysm creatures. Decided by the audience with some veto applied by the Vormithrax. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have to come up with six crazy, weird creatures that I can put in a vehicle and, uh, you know, drive around with. I don't care how hard it is to keep them, get them into the vehicle. That's part of the challenge. Um, or how likely they are to kill me. So, yeah, we're going to do some of that stuff. See, Shoggoth, you're, you're not thinking straight. Shoggoth is too easy. Because I only need to get one Shoggoth, then just toss some things into the, 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 the pen with it, and then I'll have two Shoggoth. <laughs> that makes it easy. And uh, Shoggoth aren't really that dangerous compared to most uh, some other things. So, Shoggoth, I, I think, while it sounds hard and fun, isn't actually going to be hard. I'm thinking, I, I, one of the ones I want to do, actually, is the Jabberwock. I want to have a pair of Jabberwock. I, I have NPCs on. I have the default random NPC. Oh, I should have probably turned that up because I'm not likely to find any with the default. <laughs> let's um, let's let's cancel out of this for a second. Let me go copy the world and dial up the uh, the random NPC rate. Genesis copy world settings world options. Let's dial up the random NPCs. Let's make it 10.0 and uh, go with that. All right, Genesis. Genesis 2, finished, world, Genesis 1, delete, yes, new game, preset, Noah, Genesis 2, man, I, I might have done that once or twice, okay, well, here's the deal, you guys now know what, all right, how to explain this, this first evening, we're not going to make any progress to any of that. So don't get too excited. <laughs> just, just settle down. Settle down with, with your choices there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm either going to put up a, a straw poll and I'll post it on my Discord and Twitter and all that and you guys can vote that way. So I'll, I'll take the things I see as suggestions and I'll put them in a straw poll and I'll let you guys vote them. And then that's what we'll go for. But, I mean, this first night, it's just going to be the normal... Uh, stay alive for the for the initial point. So we're not going to make any progress on it. So uh, keep having your good thoughts. Keep thinking about the types of things you want. And then this weekend, I'll put up a poll um, from feedback here today in the chat, as well as uh, stuff people tell me on my Discord and, and all that stuff. And uh, I'll put up a poll, and we'll see what we can get. Uh, what is cleptic psychosis? It used to be called schizophrenia. They renamed it. Okay, uh, so what else to talk about? Uh, so I reset the world, so we got a, a little bit more in the way of random NPCs. Purely just, you know, for the craziness, as well as for the chance to get the quest to summon the Jabberwock. Because you're not going to find any Jabberwock if you don't do the NPC quest that summons the Jabberwock. They, you, you just, they're not random in the world, <laughs> so I can't find them without the quest. So if we want Jabberwock, I need NPCs. Uh, so, we'll add those in. But, uh, yeah, so we're schizophrenic slash coleptic psychosis. 
Imperceptive healer for the funds. We're a nomad. we got to keep on the move. We get unhappy if we stay in one place too long, which is why we're doing this mobile, because we're a combat mechanic. And um, I'm going to try to make a super vehicle, one of those big things, and we've got to make it big enough. Uh, think think uh, Deadpool 2. Think Deadpool 2, the, the transport vehicle for Juggernaut. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, except I'm going to need doors on both sides of the cell. So I can walk in one way, have it follow me in, and then close the door in its face. And then uh, circle around and close the other door. That's that's the, the way I think that I'm going to have to trap some of these things. But um, yeah, so we're going to do the Deadpool 2 uh, transport armored vehicle that was moving Juggernaut around. Am I going to make it an actual boat? I debated and probably not. <laughs> We're, we're going to go with just uh, a combat mechanics version of an arc, and <laughs> not, not uh, a bow or a uh, uh, anything on the water. I just have no interest in the water stuff. There's not enough actual content there yet to be worth the effort. Only thing it would gain me is being able to drive across a river, which I almost never care about. So, too much effort, too little reward, too little of interest. So, unfortunately not. If in another year there's more water content, if they've added Z-levels to water and... We have some stuff under the water that we can go do, then sure, I'll look into it. But right now, it's just paper thin uh, mechanics involved with any of the water stuff. So, okay. Yeah, so uh, that's us. Uh, what else? So, to the stats 8, 8, 12, 10. Holy crap, I'm not going to be used to having stats like that. Uh, we actually start with some proficiency and uh, some skill. Mechanics 8, right out of the gate. I was thinking maybe I wanted to build some electronics in, just in case I have to uh, hotwire something. that make it that a little bit easier. But we'll see if... I, there's nothing inherently wrong with this guy that should keep me from doing my normal rating uh, to get books for the electronics and all that. So part of this I'm trying to do in a way where I want to do a, a challenge that, that I haven't done something like it before. And I haven't done a, a large vehicle in a long time, actually. And I know some of the newer viewers or people newer to the game might be interested in seeing that part of the process. But I'll have to have some kind of a, if not a workshop, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it. But um, we're going to be on the move a lot. So I want to be on the move a lot. I want to be constantly building and adding on to and upgrading a large vehicle. We'll put, um, you know, maybe a ram on the front and put uh, turrets on it and th all those things I normally don't do. I mean, all you regulars that have seen me just do my stripped down motorcycle or Humvee builds, that's not going to be this one. We're going to go crazy with the vehicle build, make some kind of a stupid big vehicle that's going to be stupid hard to get across bridges and through towns and um, armor it up. And it's got to be big enough inside to hold, uh, hold, the vi hold the animals, hold the creatures. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do one per cell or try to do two per cell, but put both juggernauts in the same cell with each other. Do juggernauts kill each other? I don't know. Does anybody know? <laughs> do juggernauts kill themselves? I don't really know. That would be kind of a bummer. <laughs> you get a two juggernauts and the second one shows up and you put it in the cell and they kill each other. That'd be kind of rough. Someone mentioned you lowered NPC spawn rate. I thought I moved it from 4.0 to 10.0. Did I screw up my... Did I screw up my key presses? I was doing it pretty quick. Genesis 2. Copy. Tab. Random NPC spawn to... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's that's backwards. I forgot. It used to be... Uh, didn't they handle it differently before? Bigger numbers were better previously, but now it means... Less. <laughs> Wait a minute. Base average number of days between random NPC spawns. Average duration goes up with the number of NPCs already spawned. Higher number means fewer. Okay, yeah, you're correct. I did do it backwards. I don't usually play with NPCs, so I haven't paid attention to this number in quite a while. Uh, let's go 1.0. We'll, we'll make it faster. More NPC spawns. Genesis. Back to Genesis 0. <laughs> Genesis 2, go away. You're wrong. You are wrong. New game, a preset, no uh, Genesis. All right. Do incandescent husks attack through doors? Their field effect does, yes. 
It's a set range, though. It's not like it uh, fluctuates like the electrical traps. Okay, so let's go back to Noah, and I don't care, and... Uh, what, what? Oh yeah, we're just doing evacuee, so nice and simple. Um, that's our skill list. I threw some quick, quick number, quick easy points into a couple of them to speed things up. Uh, but I was talking about the, the intent. So the intent here is to be, it's going to be fairly easy on a normal run around combat type basis because of the game world settings. Uh, but I intended it to be that way. I want this one to move fairly quickly through the normal stuff to get into the, the cool meaty stuff. And then the, um... The Coleptic Psychosis, Imperceptive Healer, Nomad, Vehicle Reliance, and um, the, the, the the toughness of the creatures that uh, the audience is going to pick for me uh, will hopefully appeal to the, uh, you know, the harder core crowd. Or not. We'll see. <laughs> However, this is what we're doing. Uh, so I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and uh, anything else I need to do? Let's uh, let's cheat. I'm gonna cheat. I'm a big giant cheater face. Let's go uh, compartmentalized. So who knows why I'm a cheater face when I pick this? I explained it in a video. Anybody know why I'm I'm a big cheater face when I pick a compartmentalized? A car that goes to <laughs> to Kelly Lee every five seconds. Perfectly splendid. <laughs> That's got to be my new catchphrase. I've got to I got to constantly say in a. I pitch girl voice. Perfectly splendid. Yes, you can trap fish. Yes, there are beavers. I have a famous video on beavers. <laughs> 2x flaming eyes. Yeah, that'd be some fun. I'm not sure how I could possibly get flaming eyes into a vehicle. That would be a tough one. I think I'd literally have to drive into the flaming eye. Is there a way to close doors via the control system? Is there a way to open and close doors? I know you can do it with like shutters or curtains. I don't think you can do it with doors, can you? I don't think so. Not something I've looked into. You can? All right. We might have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> All I've made for the last couple of years now is my stripped down, simplified vehicle versions that I always use because that's all I need. So I'll be learning a few things myself. I'm, su I'm surprised more of you haven't said Zane Deer. <laughs> I'm surprised Zane Deer wasn't like the very first thing everybody said that I have to capture. Okay. Works about the same as auto curtains. See, that might work. I might be able to... The vehicle scoop... I don't know if the scoop works for um, for creatures. Oh, I'm sure it was probably mentioned further up. <laughs> I was busy. Chat was scrolling and I was uh, on other screens setting up different things for the, the stream. <laughs> um, Let's go and uh, I think we're all set. Am I missing something? We got the uh, NPCs reset properly standard game world completely default game world evacuee start so we'll have our our normal start um i think we're good <laughs> man that's going to come up a lot it's what used to be schizophrenia they renamed it because it, it didn't actually the way it's implemented in game had no real connection to uh the technical real world schizophrenia so they gave it a fake name like they did for the the drugs same thing but it used to be called schizophrenia. A lot of things gotten renamed in the last few months. You never said why compartmentalized was cheaty. You don't know? Did anybody answer the question? I didn't see anybody actually answer the question. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see anybody answering the question. See, I don't know. Maybe I should keep it to myself. Maybe it's a secret. <laughs> Uh, okay, fine, I'll answer it. The answer is when you when you do an evacuee start, and I talk about this in my new player guide um, evacuation start that I did like a month ago. Um, when you do an evacuee start, if you leave it on the default random location, you're actually having two things get randomized. A, which of the three floor plans is randomized, 
And then B, it rolls dice to determine whether or not the floor plan is uh, looted, where you, whether you get the broken one with all the windows busted and the curtains gone and so on. If you specifically pick, you have neither random. You get that exact floor plan and you guarantee that it's not a looted shelter. That's that's why. So by picking compartmentalized, I'm doing a big cheaty thing and uh, I'm guaranteeing that I'm not going to get a looted shelter. <laughs> why are those scary? <laughs> I'll let the audience fill you in. I'm done with that challenge. Or you can watch in a few days when it hits YouTube. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into the game. Let's actually start playing some Cataclysm. Hey there, NPC. Now, I have to make my decision. Am I actually going to, uh, to, to interact with NPCs? Because I have no desire to. Other than getting the quest. I mean, this guy's got an MP40. He could put paid to this one. He's got a Nasapi vest? <laughs> Damn. This dude's rocking. What's his problem? He's got a full clothing, sappy vest, mm, diver's watch, gold bracelets, all sorts of stuff. He's fancy. Bertram Jack, lure him to his death. <laughs> I think we might have a new uh, new winner for open open shelter door and die. Used to be it was open shelter door. You are being laser targeted. Boom, you're dead. Now it might be open shelter door. Wave to herd of Zane deer <laughs> and then get bum rushed. That could be uh that could be problematic. You get a Zane deer herd right next to the shelter. Alright, so we're in. Here's our character sheet, as opposed to seeing it the other way. I guess I didn't actually show I don't think it showed uh what gear he starts with on that that final character screen. So uh there's our stats, there's our traits. There's most of our skills, and um, here is our inventory. Look what this guy starts with. Combat mechanic. Full set of clothes, army man clothes with an Asapi ballistic vest, army pants, ski mask, all sorts of good stuff. Plus we've got a bottle jack in our molly pack, hacksaw and wrench, the two things that are hard to get a hold of. So we just need to make the hammer, or get a hammer from a house, and uh, get our screwdriver, and we'll have all the basic tools. Um, welding goggles, antipsychotics, all sorts of fun. Now, I, I don't remember the last time I played with a character with, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep remembering, misremembering Coleptic Psychosis, but, uh, with this type of trait. So I don't remember the actual full effects. It's been changed a few times and, um, yeah. Playing with NPCs solely so I have access to the uh, Jabberwocky quest. I can't have Jabberwocks without NPCs. So if I want Jabberwocks, I got to talk to NPCs to get their quest. And if I want to go to the uh, hazardous waste sarcophagus storage, we've got to have an NPC quest as well. No, that's not. That's I only do multi pool. So that's uh, that's a character with multi pool. Now, I, I won't say I only, I have on rare occasions done uh, a free form or a single pool, but only for very specific reasons, and I always announce it loudly up front. 99.9% <laughs> of all my, my characters are multi-pool. Is there a way to make a knife without leaving the shelter? <laughs> Man, you people just don't like to watch my videos on YouTube that teach you all this stuff. All this cool stuff you can do. Don't worry, I'll show you. By, by the end of the first day, you should have, let's see, crowbar, knife, fire-making capability, safe fire-using capability, a bed, uh, a weapon, uh, water-secured, uh, I can't remember everything. There's a big list. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that's the one right there. Four candles. Hey, be quiet. Be quiet, Varmithrax. I don't want to hear from you. Anybody wondering what I'm talking about? There we go. That's the video I'm talking about. My new player guide for uh, evac shelter start or tips. 
show you what to do in the first 24 hours to basically fully secure almost all your needs and all the tools and weapons and, and all the stuffs. So, okay. Now I have to remember what's in that guide. <laughs> it was a month ago and now I've forgotten all the specific steps. So it'll take me longer because now I forgot. But let's do the important thing. Two evac shelters and LMOE shelter. Look at that. Look at that. Glorious. Small city of Somerset. We've got a hotel. Subway station. And that's it. No bookstores. Oh, three restaurants. A bike shop and a radio stop. Hmm. Well, that's pretty terrible. But the LMOE could be a good one. Multiple evac shelters give us first aid kits. Not much else, though. And no uh, no radio towers nearby, unfortunately. Alright, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to talk to this NPC immediately. We'll just let him sit there. Um, excuse me? <laughs> MP4, MP4032 round magazine? I know it'll be considered stealing if I try to pick it up, but it's just funny to me that it's, it's sitting here underneath him, apparently. That's kind of weird. Whistles, rations... Plastic bottle of water. I actually want this guy gone. Just so we don't have to fight over stuff. You vote not to go to the LME? Well, I didn't ask for a vote, so too bad. We're going. Make the NPC follow you and let him clear the city? That's a possibility. We'll see. I'm going to look around first, and we'll, we'll make some decisions. Rations. More rations. Do we have first aid kits in the bathroom? We do not. And we do, yes we do. We got one. All right, we'll grab the first aid kit, leave the rest for now. Anything in the garbage can? Nope. All right, we are out in the middle of a field. Uh, let's just, we'll break that door down in a bit. Look around the field real quick. Nothing of interest. A pit bull? No problem. Oh! Hey! Somebody showed up! Hey, buddy! Alright. This stream interrupted by, uh, you know, flesh for zombie dog. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Zombie dog, I broke the seal thingy. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good. We're going to lose the freshness. All right, there's there's one. You get three. <laughs> you got that one done? All right, number two. <laughs> and number three. There you go. All right, flesh for zombie dog has been... Delivered. Alright. Uh, tuck that away over there. Out of sight, out of mind. You're all set, buddy. Alright, we got Zombie Dog taken care of. What time is it? Uh, Alright, we got a little bit more time before break time. Uh, what was I doing? I was just looking around. So, Pitbull, Flint, rocks, flaking rocks. No problem. We're not going to be staying here too long, so I'm going to treat this place kind of rough. Um, yeah, let's start up here. Tear down, tear down, tear down. Ignore, drag, oh. Yeah, let's set up down here for now. We'll leave those. What else we got? Lots of water. Uh, 
All right, uh, give me a whistle, a lighter, more water, all the rations. That's pretty much it. Next up, give me a stout branch, just one. Don't mind me, Mr. NPC. Just breaking stuff. Come on, game. Don't mess with me. They're messing with me already. Up top we go. So this is where you need your chunks of steel. This is the critical thing you need to know about if you're trying to make a knife in the uh, evac shelter. Is This is the chunks of steel location. Let's say you can make the spike. Give me that. Give me those. And the copper wire. And then we'll break the railing. Or the... Not the railing. It's a rain gutter. And that gives us some more of the delicious, delicious scrap metal. All I need for the moment. We'll come back up for the uh, the water tank in a bit. <laughs> Gotta remember, I've already got some of the tools. <laughs> Tend to forget to check that kind of thing. Uh, leave the goggles for now. It'll be a while before we need those. Same with the bottle jack. Okay, so we've already got a bunch of the stuff. Do we actually have... We have no weapon, so we're a combat mechanic that has no weapon. No knife. Alright, so we do still need to go through some of the basics. Uh, let's see, open that up. Give me a spike. Um, interesting. It actually uses a cupboard as a valid place to craft. Hmm. Hmm. Didn't know that it would do that. Oh, uh, what else? Give me um, <laughs> improvised lockpicks. Oh yeah, I need to uh, butcher the long string. You can take these apart without needing a knife. So that's another thing you have to realize or know. Oh, I moved away from the uh, <laughs> from the cupboard. Short string? Did I did I not actually disassemble? Apparently I didn't finish it. Interesting. So there's the makeshift knife. The tricks being you can tear down the curtain, you can butcher the uh, long string without needing a knife. I get you the short string requirement and then uh, just take the stick from the window and go bash the, uh, the door to the roof, bash the Solar panel, and that'll get you the chunks of steel that you need, and you have knife. After that, everything kind of flows. That's the quote-unquote tricky or hard part. You do want to be careful about how many of the lockers you smash versus disassemble so that you get the right parts that you need for some of the other things. So try to, try to mix it up until you can. So we need a screwdriver, which means we need the hammer. But we'll do the makeshift hammer right where we're at. Out of, oh, planks, fine. That's what we're going to have most of. Then, a screwdriver. Out of, again, a plank. All right. And then we need a um, crowbar. Need a pipe. So, pipe's one of the things that uh, we needed to be careful of. So, deconstruct. Um, oh, that's right. We have to uh, get without the prying tool. 
This is where we have to get lucky. This is the one lucky part. You have to smash these until you get a pipe. No other real choice. We got the pipe. And give me the water and rations. That's why I was a little nervous earlier when I broke those first two and I didn't see a pipe. Drop all that. Uh, keep the tools. Not a crowbar. I want a crowbar. We only need the crowbar for a short period of time. Right now we don't have a prying capability and the makeshift hammer doesn't give it to you. Once we get a real hammer, we won't need the crowbar anymore. Till then, we're fully set up. We've got uh, hammering, knife, pliers, wrench, and so on. Uh, now, if you're doing an evac shelter start with like a survivor, not one of these advanced character starts, um, by this point, like I said, you've got your hammer, your knife, your screwdriver, and your crowbar. So you've already got the basic tools you need. Now with the crowbar, we can come up and we can disassemble the locker, deconstruct it. And that gets you the uh, more pipes and actual sheet metal. So we can take the sheet metal and use it to make the brazier. Uh-oh. Really? Somebody's breaking windows? It's not a dog. Dog wouldn't break the window. There was nothing anywhere remotely near when I circled around earlier. <laughs> Work on the craft. So, there's the brazier. And that's for safe fire. So we've got that taken care of as well. Oh, let's um, activate the brazier, put it up there. And then we'll create a firewood source up there. And be best if I or 20, 20. Okay. Soylent meat is on the menu. So we're hungry. Let's have some soylent. Because I really don't care. Are atomic lamps rare? They are. They are rare. They are They are not uncommon. They are rare. <laughs> atomic lamps are one of the things you get excited about when you find. Ignore anybody that tells you different. All right, so we got our fire um, hydration. That would be the next one. Problem is with this field, I don't know that we have any water immediately close by, but there will be some up in the forest. But uh, then you come up top and you disassemble this water tank. Deconstruct. That gets you 60 liter tanks, four of them. Um, we'll just take two for now. All downstairs. We'll leave them over here. Are there any puddles outside? I don't think there's any in reach. These open fields don't usually have them. I want to know what... Oh, the broken glass noise was my, my schizophrenia. <laughs> That's what it was. I forgot. Forgot about that fun part. We're hearing things. The tactical side of my brain said, no way, there should be nothing breaking windows right now. <laughs> Took me a while before my, 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 the rest of my brain caught up and remembered that we have uh, calyptic psychosis, so we're going to hear things. Okay, so uh, we would need to go get some water just to have that done and secured. So the best way to do that is to, uh, you know, drop the crowbar that we're not going to use. Grab one of these. And take a trip. Hey, look at that. We got water. Super convenient. I'm not going to try to carry it back full. It's super heavy. We're going to drag it back. And there to there. 
All right, we have a tank full of water. We'll use this one as a... Uh, oops. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> I want that one over there. Still in range, but uh, not right next to me. Not quite the uh, organization I normally do, but it'll work for now. So we've got a six liter tank of water. That's 240 units of water. If we uh, scroll, or scroll this down. Uh, whoop, that's not the thing. Did I move the wrong one? I moved the wrong, oh, that's right. It, this is the one. So. Total capacity, pocket one, 60 liters. It does, oh, there it is, 240. 240 water. So that's gonna be more than enough for quite a long time. So we've secured our fire, we've secured our water, we've secured our tools. For weapons, uh, the easiest one to go with is uh, the cudgel. Cudgel's a good one. I have no interest in the bows right now. Um, we'll just go with the simple cudgel. Thank you, cudgel. Problem is though that I need to take the uh, the crowbar with me, so we're going to use that as a temporary weapon instead of the uh, the cudgel. Come here, crowbar. Till we get better storage capacity. Okay. Uh, what else? Only uh, it's only ten forty-five. <laughs> it's early. Let's go get one or two other things. So another thing we want to get is a little better light sourcing. We don't care about the water in the toilets because we've got infinite water. We want the wax. Come here, wax. You are my wax. Nothing else down here I care about. So we're pretty much done in the basement. Make some candles. All right, so we have candles. Let's uh, butcher one more long string. Ah, oh, crap, I keep moving away. Mm. Four is plenty. We have four candles. So the candles are awesome. If you're not using candles early game, you should be. I mean, if you have other better solutions, great. But if you don't, candles are the go-to. Just go smash some toilets so you don't need. Grab the wax, grab some short strings, which are easy. Grab the curtains from here or from houses and so on. And then just chop up the strings to short strings. And as you can see, we now have four candles. Quick and easy. Uh, the only thing we don't have, if you're a survivor character, we started with um, fire making capability the form of, uh, you know, all these lighters <laughs> with this particular shelter. But if you don't happen to start with lighters or any other fire making, you can uh, raise your survival skill and do a fire starter. We don't need to do that, so I'm not going to bother this time. But um, the video I listed earlier shows it. Uh, what do we got? Survival one. I don't think, I think you need two for the good ones. Yeah, we don't have access to either, so... Survival 2 is easy, though. Again, watch the other video. Alright, we've got everything I needed, though. we got fire, we got water, we got food from the ration bars. Um, we do need to cook up some water, so I'm going to need some, uh, some, some wood. Uh, easiest thing to do is to take this stuff. Let's go ahead and deconstruct instead of uh, smash at least a few. The answer to why smash versus deconstruct is smashing is faster, lots faster. You do get less materials and you can get different materials. Smashing a locker gives you different materials than deconstructing a locker. So depending on what you need and how much of various materials are nearby and what you estimate your needs are, 
You may want to smash, you may want to deconstruct, but it's not always best to deconstruct because you could be wasting time that is uh, more usefully put to other places when it's a material that you've got as much access to as you'll ever need. So if there's not a material shortage, you don't really need to worry about deconstructing everything. All to this space, reset. Eh, just put it all in this one space. All right, then get the nails out of here. So 20 planks, 20 planks, whoops. 20 planks will do for now. All right, let's start a fire. Start a fire, you'll need a fire source. Excuse me? <laughs> I guess I do need to have it in my inventory. Okay, we're just gonna boil up some water real quick. Batch 53 hours and 21 minutes real quick. Let's see, what do I need to do? We are going to rotate down, get the first aid kit from the other shelter, and then go check out the LMOE. Um, we don't have super good night vision on this character. We're actually set up pretty well. We do have night vision and 10 perception. That's not going to give us... It's still only going to give us four. I think you need 11 perception nowadays after the stupid light changes. You need 11 perception to get that third space of normal night vision. And then uh, night vision would give you up to two more, would give you two more. So you'd have five total. I should have four with 10 perception. So that's okay. That's good. But um, not good in regards to what we want to do running into a town. So... I'd kind of like to get to it in the daylight. It's noon. I don't really have much else in my list. I think what I'll do is I'll just... I'll, I'll craft just a smaller amount. Actually, we've got a ton of water in these bottles, don't we? Yeah, screw that. We, we've got plenty. We've got plenty. Stupid amount of rations. We've already got to like 20 water just sitting here in bottles. Alright, so let's... uh. Tank up on that. Full and turgid. Wait 30 minutes. Then have two more rations and fill the rest of my belly with water again. Cool. We are full up. Still normal weight. That'll change. So if there's anybody watching that's new to Cataclysm and I'm moving too fast, you don't understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, I try to explain some things, but... Um, Every stream might be some brand new player who doesn't know, so I don't mind repeating myself. I don't mind answering questions. If you really want me to answer the question, use the little channel points that you accumulate to highlight your question. Um, my, my chat screen is just a, a hair off my normal sight line <laughs> to the left. My left, anyway. And uh, if you highlight it, then uh, it's much, much easier for me to notice and uh, hopefully answer the question. Yep, Wrench and the Hacksaw were from starting gear for the combat mechanic, correct. Uh, but like I was saying, if you have questions, uh, if you're curious why I'm doing something, how I'm doing it, um, make sure to ask in chat. I do a ton of tutorial content for the game, and uh, I'm always happy to stop and explain what's going on. Except for the rowdy yahoos that already know, and I know are just, you know, baiting me. Those guys can just go in a corner all right so let's take a trip i think we're all set uh we have no real weapon we're just going to use our our feet and our, uh, our crowbar as a weapon we'll leave behind the short string we'll take the medical gear with us we'll take the tools with us i don't need the candles with i'm gonna take one candle we'll leave the others i have no portable light source yet we pretty much need everything so i'd love to get to a house if, if this house, we're probably going to wait for nightfall. We'll, we'll hit these two, pull back, wait for night, and then I'll, I'll do a night run into these houses up here. And uh, we'll grab a real hammer and whatever else is available. And we'll be on the search for a vehicle. I want to get into a vehicle as quick as possible and get the real part of the challenge rolling. So we're not going to be in this shelter for probably more than a day or so. Um, yeah, let's take off. We'll just go right out the window. Should I talk to this NPC? I guess I should talk to the NPC. See if he gives me the Jabberwock quest. If he gives me the Jabberwock quest, the Jabberwock's going to appear in this forest right here or right here. It's, just, it's almost always the forest closest to the, where the NPC gave you the quest. So I'm going to estimate if we get the Jabberwock, it's going to be one of those two. 
It's one of the only reasons why I'm holding off on talking to the NPC. I have no interest in interacting with him otherwise. I'm not going to be getting NPC friends and buddies. I'm, I'm not going to purposely use him as a go kill all the zombies in the town. I purely want the NPCs option just for the Jabberwock quest. And maybe the Hazardous Waste quest. That's it. So, NPCs are too annoying to me personally because they're just so totally inept. They I can't use them in my gameplay. And uh, they drive me berserk with how, how stupid they are. And, um, yeah, and I don't, and they're too easy for me to manipulate. I, I can use them to too huge an advantage if I were willing to uh, take the time and the, the hassle. So, we're just going to leave them for now. I'll talk to them later when I'm ready to uh, start kicking off the quest stuff. Well, let's go down the road. Right after I scroll my chat screen down, because I'm missing stuff. Hey, Vorm, how you doing? Hey, Adam's Laboratory, I'm doing pretty good. Never really played before. <laughs> you just, 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 just watch. <laughs> it's fine. I don't mind. Why did you eat like that so much without being hungry? So I am packing on the weight. It's a good question. So my weight is normal. Here's the short way to understand the food system for all new players. Make this say overweight always. It's the only thing you need to pay attention to. Get it to overweight. Keep it at overweight. Ignore everything else. That's the only thing you need to do. And, and stay sane and happy with the food system. So you start the game at the overweight status, which I think is you're like one calorie into overweight. Um, so I'm bulking up. I'm putting on extra calories just so it won't bother me <laughs> for a little while. So hydration is more important than calories. As long as you know to keep an eye on this and to eat enough each day to keep this in the overweight category, hydration is the thing you want to watch. Because hydration, when it when it goes negative, will immediately start impacting your actual character stats and your ability to survive moment to moment. Hunger? You could be hungry a really, really long time, and it would take quite a while before any negative effects would actually be applied to the character. So, as an example, if you start XXL, um, the morbidly obese trait, um, with the maximum weight class, you can literally not eat for months and not have any negative effects beyond what the weight itself is causing you. So hydration is what you're worried about. So basically I just bulked up, filled my entire stomach. There's actually multiple things being tracked with the hunger system. There's stomach capacity, how much room you actually have in your belly that prevents you from eating an entire cow in one sitting to fix a, a, a weight problem. Um, and there is processing time for how long it takes you to digest the food and free up that space again. So you can sometimes run into problems where you can be super thirsty and you literally can't drink enough because your stomach capacity limitations to get out of the thirsty status. You have to wait a while, then drink some more, wait a while, drink some more. And it takes a bit of time to actually get out of the, the full dehydration. Um, so that's it. I'm just tanking up and uh, filling in all the nooks and crannies because I didn't want to carry a bunch around with me. Because I, I was anticipating bringing back a bunch of stuff. So I just bulked up on all the food and water before I took off. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, managing the fashion camp is fun. We shall agree to disagree. Go for more butter? Hell yeah, I'm going for butter. <laughs> Hell yeah, I don't have the advanced evolution on this one. There is all the butter in the world waiting for me out there. It's not all going to be rotten butter. Hey there, Mr. Beagle. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, so let's cut across. I'm staying near or on the road so I can watch for vehicles. Like that, right there. That's why I didn't do a straight line across the fields. Hey, vehicle. How you looking? No wheels, so not good. You got gas, you got a clean battery, everything else is looking pretty good. Just need to go find us four wheels. <laughs> Simpler to just, you know, find another vehicle that actually is working. So, but it's good to know we got some gas sitting right here and some other parts. We got mechanic skills, so I could rip out the uh, the seat belts. That's a uh, good tip for for players if they don't know. Seat belts, you take these out and it gives you a short rope, which is, uh, you can take apart for string and you can take that apart for short string and you can take that apart for thread. That's the more economical way to, uh, to get to thread is to downgrade from a higher item to a lower one. It's much faster. 
Uh, so we could take that seatbelt, for example. I'm looking for ones that aren't damaged. That one. That one. Cool. So we got uh, three short ropes. Don't take a lot of volume, and that basically solves most of my uh, string thread problems for quite a while. All right, so who's guessing, or who's betting that we're going to run into a Zane Deer early? Hey, look, it's a ruined one. <laughs> See, whoever whoever started in this shelter didn't do the trick I showed you. They didn't uh, they didn't pick which shelter. All I really care about is uh, first aid kits in the bathroom. There we go. Give me that. Oh yeah, and uh, we'll take a couple more wax. That'll keep us in the light. Uh, all. Three first aid kits. Pretty good. Now I just need to get some antiseptic, and um, I'm a happy man. I'll be a happy Vormithrax. Oh, uh, shall we check? I'm not going to bother. That <laughs> candle was zero out of a hundred. Nope. It used to be fun in the past when you would check this this trash can here and it had the Hack Pro software. The old the old folks know what I'm talking about, but uh, it was always a good time when you started to run in your first evac shelter. The trash can here had the uh, the Hack Pro software. Doesn't matter anymore. One of the things that have been removed. Well, the Hack Pro still in, but uh, its use has been removed. Oh, we'll take some more protein and we'll we'll ditch it if I need the space. I guess. Ooh, a flashlight. Um, no battery yet, but we'll go ahead and take it. Water and more rations. We're just going to leave them. Hey, Mikhail. Thanks much for the resub. Never consider doing zombie zoo where you lock up regular zombies in pens so you can watch them evolve. <laughs> Not the watch them evolve part. This is kind of my variant of the zoo thing. And Remo's back as well. Hey, Remo. All right, there won't be anything else I care about. Lots of uh, food, but that's that's not really going to be an issue for me in this run anyway. So, all right, let's uh, work our way up the street, and then we'll we'll go off to the side. Uh, somebody asked about the engine. What engine are we talking about? I'm not sure, Dano, what uh, what engine you're talking about there. The car had no wheels. That, that's the only thing. Oh, well, I didn't check the fault. I don't really care. That doesn't really interest me. Almost everything. <laughs> Almost all the parts that could be faulty are faulty. I think there's, what, like two more things? It has lots of faults. Lots of reasons it's not going to move. But the four missing wheels pretty much means I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to replace four wheels. Okay, our first zombie sighting coming up on the town. Standard zombies, it looked like. So we're not playing uh, with ev ev advanced evolution. Typically, my my default starts, I do about three weeks of evolution. To, you know, throw a few fun zombies into the mix right at the start. This one, I'm playing a completely generic default world. So we're going to peel off. I don't want to deal with those guys right now. Let's go check out the, uh, the LMOE, Last Man on Earth Shelter. How to, love, how to level up mechanics since fixing metal pipe doesn't work anymore? Uh, I've answered that a whole bunch of times in a whole bunch of places. The answers are two. A, find a crate that you can pry open and then reseal. The act of resealing it through the construction menu will level you up. Or, grab up, make a hammer and screwdriver, which you can do basics. I've, I've, I've linked a video and show how to do that all the time. But uh, get a hammer, and well, actually now it's a hammer and crowbar, not a hammer and screwdriver, or crowbar and screwdriver, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, grab the tools and um, get a bunch of nails and planks together, craft up wood frames, these things right here, at Fab 1, you can make wood frames, just make uh, four of them, 
are going to probably be needed, but you might need six. And uh, once you've got those together, then you just start a vehicle. Use the construction menu to start a vehicle construction. That'll use one of the frames for the vehicle. And then you add a wooden box to it with the other frame. That'll get you a chunk of XP. And if you just do that twice, usually if you have a decent focus, you'll be level one mechanics. So just get the basic tools, get some planks and nails, make some wood frames, start a vehicle, add a wooden box, start a vehicle, add a wooden box. And then if you're still not there, start one more vehicle and add a wooden box. And you're, uh, you'll be a mechanics one. Those are the easy ways to do it. You cannot do it, which a lot of videos and I constantly see people in Discord and Reddit telling people there's absolutely no way to do it by fiddling with items on a vehicle. You can't just uninstall, reinstall headlights or mirrors or anything else. It does not work. You get no XP. So ignore all those people that are telling you to uh, just go fiddle with a vehicle and add and remove parts. There is nothing you can do on a vehicle that will take you from mechanics zero to one in that fashion. All right, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I saw a squirrel. I don't like going into the woods anymore. It's scary in here now with all the uh, the bone versions and zombie versions of animals, especially Zane deer. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is climb up on top of the LMOE. Take a look at our map, because we're now a little higher up so we can see a little further. That revealed the pharmacy on the outer edge of town. That's useful to know about. But beyond that, we're a little bit screwed because we've got a pool here. It's going to be chock full of zombies. And we've got a park here, also chock full of zombies. That is not good. What I do like, though, is I like seeing this house buried up against the edge out by itself. There could be another house right here. But it's... Um, on the back of the forest edge here, so there's a very good chance we could uh, creep into these back houses without too much danger. So from a tactical planning status, this, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for ways I can approach houses with a minimum of sight line so that I can uh, get into these and then be able to back off or retreat through the forest again. You always want to consider where you're going to retreat to when you're planning a city raid. Other things to think about are your sight ranges. So right now, we've got a default day 61 start. We don't have much of a moon bonus. As time passes, as the days go by, the moon will get more and more full, and you'll get a vision bonus at night. That's another thing you definitely want to take advantage of, especially the first week. All right, we have, uh, I have no light-making capability. We're hoping to find a battery down here. I did grab that flashlight, right? I did. All right, so this design, what do we got? All sorts of stuff. There's a headlamp, that's even better, with battery. Cool, we'll wear the headlamp, we'll activate the headlamp. We have light. Uh, nail gun, a canvas sack I don't care about. Shovel, I don't have space to carry. Uh, we'll take the knife, I don't need the tow cable or the sandpaper. I've already got a wrench, we'll grab the nails. And, hey, that's an early electronics book. That's okay. Those I don't care about. And the pocket guide to first aid we already picked up. Well, we'll take the knife fighter notes. Miscellaneous repair kit and a screwdriver set. That's an upgrade, so we'll ditch the screwdriver. And we'll ditch the flashlight. We don't need it anymore either now that we've got the headlamp. Okay, first room done. Head into the kitchen. There's a wood saw. It's another tool to complete our collection. There's a pot for us to cook in. We'll take the steak knife. That's going to be better than what we had. Don't care. Another flashlight. Not enough battery charge. Okay, next... What you got for me? A purse, some gummy vitamins, and some cough syrup. Well, hopefully we don't get a cold, but we're going to grab the cough syrup just in case. The game lately has loved to give me colds. And a regular backpack, huh? Uh, right now we're rocking a molly pack. 35% coverage. 
20 liters being the largest. Um, sure, we'll take another backpack. Temporarily. I don't think I'll use it much. We'll ditch it probably pretty quickly. Trench knife. Handles, flares, flashlight. We'll take aspirin and antiseptic and duct tape. Don't need, don't need, but I'll take the battery. Sure, we can grab a trench knife. That's a pretty good candle. Got all the lighters we need. 